All right, Editing Fairies by Jay Wilburn. Frina had been told to edit with a light touch, so she chose her moments carefully. As she floated above Glinda's bed, where the young girl laid her head crying into her pillows and stuffed animals, Frina didn't have the heart to let this go on. Frina's gossamer wings fluttered behind her, but slowed a bit as she considered what to do. It caused the fairy to bob in the air near the girl's ceiling. Frina wore a sparkling dress as Glinda uh, curled up into a fetal position in her sweats. Glinda's curls spilled around her face as if trying to hide herself from the world. Frina had curled her hair like Glinda's before the tryouts, maybe for good luck, maybe in quiet solidarity. Frina's hair still had its lovely bounce, though. The fairy thought she knew what had to be done here. She opened the book again and flipped back to the page where Glinda had been cut from the junior cheerleading squad. With a stroke of her magic pen, the day rewound itself. Glinda's bedding was dry again, and Glinda... Gilda, sorry. Gilda stood in the hall outside the gym once more, but this time she celebrated with the other girls in front of the list of names. Frina took a moment to survey the other downcast girls walking away in tears. Had she rewritten one of their histories in erasing Glinda's sorrow, Gilda's sorrow. Probably. Maybe one of their editing fairies would protest this move. But Gilda was happy again, so all was well. Frina twirled her magic pen, twirled her pen and magic dust spilled out from it. Gilda was crying again. She had ice on her ankle where she sat on the lowest bench of the bleachers as the other girls continued to practice out on the mats. It wasn't clear how bad the injury was yet. She should wait. Frina knew that waiting was the right thing, but still. Her wings buzzed with nervous energy as she circled over Gilda's head again and again. Gilda waved a, ha waved a hand as if getting something away from her ear and then gritted her teeth in pain. Uh, this was exactly what Gilda's mother said would happen when Gilda insisted on trying out. Gilda had rolled her eyes and used her influence over her father to divide her parents on the issue. Frina had discovered over the years that the girl uh, didn't need an editing pen to change her father's course. Frina took a deep breath and opened her book again. They were still on the same page where the fall had occurred. All the detail was there, including a description of the crunching sound Gilda's ankle had made when it twisted under her on impact from the complicated stunt gone bad. There was even a bit of foreshadowing where the text spelled out that they would soon discover it was much worse than they thought. Frida was sure of her choice at that point. Before the rolling script of Gilda's story broke to the next page, Frida edited the middle of the key paragraph. Instead of the unfortunate fall, the paragraph now ended with a successful landing. The subsequent story faded away as Gilda stood back out on the floor with her hands raised instead of her ankle broken. Frida took artistic license while she still had the book open, and the other girls in the squad applauded. The coach called out, Why is everyone clapping? Get back into formation and run it again. The other girls looked around at each other and then down at their hands, as if they had no idea why what they were clapping about either. Gilda smiled at all the attention anyway, and that was all that mattered to Frida. As she tucked Gilda's book under her arm, she spied a few of the other girls' fairies hovering across the gym, whispering behind their hands. Let them talk. Gilda was Frina's responsibility, and as far as she was concerned, the girl ruined her ankle. The girl ruining her ankle served no purpose. It didn't belong in the story. Frina had little time. Already some of the unwritten pages in the back of Gilda's book had disappeared. It wasn't a mad rush of the sudden end of life, but the book was noticeably thinner. There was no debate this time. A few groans and moans from the stand echoed through the large space as people still reacted and rebelled against the prevailing shocked silence. The place had competing smells that Frina didn't care for. There was a sort of fine aroma of leather and polish. Over that was a flowery mix of perfumes that seemed to be trying to hide the dirty odor of sweat. As the cheer coach and, the, and a medic stabilized Gilda's neck, Frina turned pages frantically. She was going way back before the accident because, of course, even though this was the first incident from Gilda's memory, it was far from the first that Frina had edited. Maybe if she had left an injured ankle, then she wouldn't be trying to save the girl's neck and restore those lost pages as well. 
The fairy's ears were sharp, and she heard a few people mumbling to one another about Gilda's coach. They called her dangerous and reckless. One said this was bound to happen eventually. Freena didn't care for that. Humans were arrogant in their ignorance sometimes. They didn't know anything about the future and constantly stumbled into trouble to prove it, keeping their editing fairies busy. One of Gilda's ribbons came loose from her hair, but no one bothered to fix it. Freena had tied, tied similar ribbons in her hair as well, where the knots remained immaculate, reckless, bound to happen eventually. There was no way of knowing, though. Freena kept flipping. There was always the risk of some incidents passing the point of no further edits allowed. Death was one, but there were other story points that became integral to the plot. At that point, there was no removing the consequences. Where was that page? It was somewhere back in the early spring, a Thursday, Frida thought. She found it. As the squad stood together holding hands, and parents of all the other teams at the competition watched on in silence or with knowing whispers, Frida edited an old passage and returned Gilda's story to a previous timeline. A moment before this terrible scene swirled away, a backstage door crashed open. Gilda's mother ran through, ran through headlong toward her daughter. Gilda's father followed, carrying Gilda's little sister. Someone reached out to stall the woman, but she barreled through their reach to keep running. That's where this thread broke. The rewinding action felt like being ripped apart. That was the cost of erasing months of story. Frida only gave a little thought to the other fairies and how this impacted their stories as well. The fairy was so dizzy by the time they were back in Gilda's bedroom in the early spring that she had to drop to the carpet and give her wings a rest. The book spilled out onto the floor beside her. It remained closed with Gilda's name and gold script on the cover. Frina heaved for breath and sounded quite like Gilda as the girl, who looked much younger and smaller today, cried into her pillows and stuffed animals about not making the squad. Frina's ribbons had finally started to come loose. She pulled them away from her hair and cast them aside. Gilda's curls covered her face as if hiding her and her sorrow from the world. The story was starting again from here, with sentence after sentence of the girl's life filling the pages once more, this time without cheerleading as part of the story. Gilda's fairy uh, took comfort in the fact that the book's spine appeared thicker once more. That was no guarantee, of course, but it was far better than the alternative. Something rapped against the glass of the window behind her. Frida, Frida startled, but Gilda continued crying as if she heard nothing. Her bedroom was on the second floor. Frina took up the book and turned slowly. Another fairy, older, wiser, and with a cross scowl over her face, stared through the window at Frina. Frina sighed and whispered, Celia. Celia pointed through the window, and her voice came muffled, but clear enough for Frina to hear. We need to talk. They sat on a mossy rock next to each other in the woods. Road noise reached them through the trees. It was nice to rest her wings for a while. Frina liked Celia's company on most days, but she suspected this would not be one of those days. Frina looked in the direction of Gilda's house, knowing it was too far away to see. I don't like being away from her this long. I'm sure you don't, Celia said. You love her very much. Of course I do. Gilda is my girl. She's my responsibility. Her book is your responsibility. Gilda is Gilda's responsibility. To a lesser degree, her parents' responsibility, too. But those days are soon coming to a close. If you let the days unfold, and she will if you let the days unfold, and she will need to survive by her wits and the lessons she experiences from her story that from her that the experiences from her story give her. Sorry about that. The book, the girl, Frina shook her head. Are they not the same thing, the same charge? Not exactly, Celia said. Not exactly. Are you here to scold me? Did other fairies complain about me? You know fairies and their tales, Celia said, but no, I didn't need anyone to tell. You did a big edit today or should I say erased several days in an instant, entire pages of the calendar with all the stories they contained. You broke a thread, shattered pages, scattered pages to the wind. Was I supposed to leave her neck broken? Sometimes, yes, you were supposed to leave them. I couldn't. Wouldn't, you mean, Frina. But my point is that your, that your most recent edit cost several pages of story, and... Um... And from several books, those pages have to be written again. Those lessons have to be relearned. All the work in progress was undone in many different works in progress. Libraries worth of lives were reset today. 
I couldn't leave her that way. It was my fault she found herself there to be hurt like that, and I had to set it right. Whether it was truly your doing or not is a mystery even to us, Celia said, but there is a lesson um, in, in this even for you. Am I not supposed to edit out her tragedies? A light touch, Celia recited. That is no guidance at all, Frina said, a little louder than she intended. A group of squirrels nearby scattered and fled up the trees behind where the fairies sat. It's it's like saying show, don't tell. Everyone says it, but no one really agrees on what it means. Celia said, this is a lesson you must learn. There are some lessons that can only be taught through pain and suffering. When you take away all the small lessons, then th your charge is more likely to learn the hard way with a much steeper learning curve later. Frina could still picture that broken neck that never happened now. That would have been a steep learning curve indeed. I'll try to be more careful. Frina floated up into the air above the rock as if that were it. Celia floated up with her, and I'll be there to help you. You're going to be watching over my shoulder? Mentoring, I prefer to call it. So how long will you be mentoring over my shoulder? Celia rolled her eyes, much like Gilda did, to her mother. A few years at least. Are you going to hold my pen? Will my edits have to be pre-approved? Um, uh, no one has stopped you from doing anything, have they? Just as you must learn to use a light touch, so I will use a light touch with you as an example. They flew through the woods together in silence. Frina brooded in her thoughts, and Celia gave her the space to do so. When they arrived back at the house together, Frida was surprised to find Gilda in the yard with her little sister. On this page of the story, the sister was had just learned to walk. Gilda must have washed her face. Her hair was pulled back, exposing her dry cheeks to the sun. The little sister wavered on her feet and reached skyward as she giggled with joy. Gilda smiled too, and so soon after being in tears. A swarm of butterflies fluttered up and around their heads. The sisters shared the wonder as the fairies took in the scene. Frina brushed back her own curls as she watched a piece of the story that had not occurred before. She was just happy Gilda could stand it all. All right. Uh, Gilda tried out for cheerleading twice more in the coming years. She was cut each time, but cried less afterward. Frina remembered seeing Gilda collapsed on the stage with her eyes rolled up and a temporary brace around her neck. She could still smell those competing odors and hear the whispers of how this was inevitable. That was a timeline that never happened, but Frina never forgot it. It was indeed a lesson she had learned it. If it was indeed a lesson, she had learned it. Uh, that cheerleading coach had since been let go and moved on. That was some other fairy's concern now. Gilda now sat in the dark under, under scant stars, washed out by the scattering of security lights around the school and the parking lot area. No butterflies here, but fat, pale moths circled and clicked against the plastic diffusion covers over the lights. A bass line pumped out from the walls of the gym several yards away. Gilda leaned over her lap, the lap of her nice dress, where she sat on the bench alone with her wet eyes and broken heart. A few strands of her hair escaped her expensive updo. Frina had left her own hair down and loose around her shoulders tonight. Frina and Celia hovered a few feet away over the nearly deserted parking lot. What are you thinking? Celia asked. Frina answered without hesitation. She's better off without him. Probably. I bet she wishes she never met him. That she hadn't wasted all those months of her last year in high school with him. Perhaps. Celia looked at the book, tucked firmly under Frina's arm. So you've decided this is a lesson that needs to be learned now? I don't know what to think, Frina said with her eyes ever on Gilda. Maybe remembering what he was will keep her from finding another one like him. Celia said, or she may develop a pattern of going after guys that are bad for her. That happens too. Why are you doing this? What? Celia asked. You know what you're doing. Why are you trying to push me to edit all this when you know I'm not supposed to? I don't know the exact right thing to do any more than you do, Frina. The pages past this moment are as blank for me as they are for you or her. Anything could happen. Any path could lead to tragedy. There is heartbreak to be found everywhere. She is your charge, and it's your call, just like it always was. It's Gilda's responsibility, Frina said. I'm just in charge of the book. Celia patted Frina's shoulder. They waited a while longer before voices rose. The fairies heard them before Gilda did. Gilda tried her best to wipe her face before the other girls arrived, but her, but her hair was up and there was no hiding herself with it like she used to do when she was younger. 
They already knew what had happened, though. Stories spread fast in high school. Gilda's friends gathered around her as she broke down crying some more from telling the story they'd already heard of her ruined night. To their credit, they just let her tell it without edits or interruption. They tried to coax her back inside, but she wouldn't go. She told them to go on and have fun without her, but they refused. One of the girls removed a butterfly pin from her hair and affixed it to Gilda's hair, taking back up a few loose strands. She felt it gently with her fingertips and tried to smile, but it wasn't all that pretty of a smile with the smeared makeup and swollen eyes. The girls decided to go somewhere else for something to eat, and Gilda agreed. Frida flew after them as the group crossed the parking lot to one of their dis one of the distant cars. The fairy paused when she realized she was alone. Turning, she asked Celia, are you coming? I have other responsibilities to see to, Celia said. Frida had grown so used to the other fairies' presence that it, it took her a while to understand what this meant. Um, oh, okay. Are you saying I've learned, I finally learned my lesson? Celia smiled. We never stop learning. I've enjoyed our time together and look forward to seeing you again. Um, they stared at each other a moment longer. Frina felt like something more needed to be said. Move along, Celia ordered, before your girl gets away with gets away from you. She'll be fine, Frina said, but she did move toward the car as it started. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Celia went her way and Frina flew a along above the car to go with the girls to eat. She could have ridden along inside, but she decided the speed and the night air through her hair felt good.